Hello and welcome. This video is about a case discussion on menorrhagia in a multiparous woman. Mrs. Khan is a married 32 year old with two children, the youngest being three years old. She has been suffering from painless, heavy and regular menstrual cycles for the past eight months. Pelvic examination is unremarkable and a transvaginal ultrasound scan did not reveal any abnormality. A recent cervical smear is also normal. A series of questions need to be answered for this patient. These include the meaning of menorrhagia, elements of history taking, investigations, definitions and treatment options including management of infertility. Menorrhagia means the presence of heavy menstrual flow in a regular cycle. The first question is about the essential requirements in clinical history taking. For this, it is important to investigate clinically a history of comorbids that may be present in the patient. We also need to find out a history of starting any drug therapy in the past year and contraceptive use. Medications that can influence blood flow in the menstrual cycle include warfarin, aspirin, clopidogrel and other anticoagulants. The use of tamoxifen, tricyclic antidepressants, antipsychotics may also influence the blood flow. A common reason for disturbance of menstrual flow is the menstrual pattern after insertion of intrauterine contraceptive device. These are either the plain or the copper type of devices. We already have the pelvic ultrasound and cervical smear. What other investigations would you like to perform on this patient? We need to do a complete blood picture to identify level of hemoglobin, white cell count and platelets, a thyroid function test and coagulation screen where bleeding is very heavy. What are the treatment options that you might offer this patient? For the vast majority of patients, we will offer medical management and in most of them, medical management is successful in the long term. Mephenemic acid is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug and works by reducing the prostaglandin activity in the endometrium. This reduces the amount of blood loss during the flow but has no effect on duration of the flow. Tronexamic acid is an anti-fibrinolytic agent and acts by blocking the breakdown of blood clots in the endometrium. Oral progestogens act by decidualizing the endometrium where there is an ovulation. Combined oral contraceptive pill acts by suppressing ovulation by inhibiting the gonadotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus and inhibiting luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone levels. This in turn suppresses the endometrium resulting in scanty regular cyclical withdrawal bleed. Another useful drug is Danazol, which acts by suppressing the pituitary output of gonadotropins and it also has androgenic activity which acts at the level of the endometrium and the ovary. After proper counselling, if a patient 
is unwilling to take oral medication, then another option is to insert a levonorgestrel loaded intrauterine contraceptive device. In a patient where the medical options are not working and where hemoglobin levels are falling to a dangerously low level repeatedly, surgical options may also be offered to the patient. Surgical options include ablative therapy which is associated with the reduction or elimination of menstrual bleeding. The procedure has a high level of satisfaction on long term follow up and recurrence of symptoms is associated with repeated ablation and or hysterectomy. Uterine artery embolization is another option and in approximately 5% of patients there may be severe pain following this procedure. There may be associated signs and symptoms of infection. If you are able to confirm that pelvic infection is present, then it can lead to a hysterectomy in a small percentage of patients. The last most extreme option is a hysterectomy with conservation of both ovaries. There may be a situation where the above patient wants to become pregnant. In such a situation, what advice would you give her? First of all, we need to know whether the couple have been using any method of contraception since the last child was born. If they have been using contraception, then the couple should be advised to stop using uh, uh, contraception and they can be placed on a medication which will not compromise a spontaneous pregnancy. For example, the use of progestogens orally. The couple can wait for three to six months or even longer to try for a spontaneous pregnancy. However, if the couple have not been using contraception for the last three years, since the last child was born, then there is a situation where investigations are warranted. In addition to all the treatments that we give to the patient, we must remember that these patients may have very low iron stores and so they need to be given supplemental iron and folic acid to replenish the stores. With this we come to the end of the video. If you like this video then please subscribe, like, comment and share. Thank you very much.